Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be talking about my top maintenance tips that I like to do on my aquariums. I get a lot of questions, sometimes people ask me on Instagram that, you know, what would I do with their tank if I was in their shoes? How would I improve it? And I find that a lot of the things I might say, it's just little tiny things that maybe could have been fixed through maintenance, such as like, you know, the, the soil is on the sand and things like this. But I think I've got a couple tips that might help people during their maintenance. And hopefully if you, you know, if you benefit from any of these tips, let me know in the comments. And also if you have any special tips, you know, kind of like new unique quirky tips, let me know as well. And pe people would be really interested, I think, uh, in all the help they can get. So drop them in the comments below. The first tip I have for you is something I picked up from Dennis Wong from the Two Hour Aquarist. Um, if you've ever watched his YouTube page, it's it's, it's brilliant, um, but also his uh, website as well, which has all the information you'd ever want. But one of the tips really, really stood out for me, and it was using something like this. This is a turkey baster, so you might have like, well, Christmas is coming up, right? And if you're maybe in the UK or if you're British, we like to have like a roast dinner, but we have... Uh, yeah, we have a roast dinner with turkey and um, when the turkey's in the oven you'd like scoop up the turkey juices and then put it on the top of the turkey with this but um, there's another use for this um, we're not uh, talking about food we're talking about our aquariums so um, i like to use this for dislodging any kind of like waste organics or any uh, you know fish poop um, dead plant matter from areas that are kind of hard to reach in the tank you can also do it into like moss because moss likes to build up a lot of a lot of like just waste and if you kind of like you know squish this on the moss and um, you'll find that there's a lot of uh, the debris that comes off and any, under any hardscape even through the, the carpets you know there's, there's a lot of waste that builds up so this can be really really handy and you know this is quite big so you can get some smaller ones you can get some bigger ones but um, I came up with another idea um, for little tiny tanks. I've got this little tiny one right here. And I find that this is quite helpful if you have a really, really small tank. So, you know, pick your weapon. Maintenance tip number two, um, we've got a little paintbrush. Um, this is not something many people talk about or do. I think most people use like a toothbrush, but I find that a toothbrush is quite big in small tanks and sometimes you need something with a bit of a lighter touch so the bristles on this brush are quite soft and i feel like if i was you know trying to clean some moss or clean clean some areas that are really hard to reach that you just can't get the brush into like between rocks or something like this a little tiny paintbrush like this is is so helpful um and also if you're you're a sand if you have sand in the tank and uh, the you know this the early stages of a tank sometimes you get diatoms this is kind of useful for like stirring up the sand so i really recommend getting something along the lines of this or something that's uh more more versatile um and a different tool than just a toothbrush for the next tip i'm not going to be talking about any tools i'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, advice remove the dead plants um from the tank because as they build up, you know, you'll get some plants with holes in it or you'll get um, like one leaf, um, like, like a Bucephalandra or there might be a, you know, one of your Magrosaurus and one of your ferns that have like a leaf that's not doing so well. Just remove it, um, get your fingers in, pinch the leaf out, um, get your uh, scissors or tweezers or whatever, just remove all the dead plant matter in the tank. It's gonna, it's gonna make your system run so much more smoothly and avoid you know, all these algae issues that attract, you know, when the plant's dying, the, the plant will attract algae. So best to just remove it before this happens. Um, along those lines, on the same tip, get your hands in the tank. Start uh, removing algae if it's in the initial phase of the tank with those little diatoms. Get your hands in the tank, rub off the algae off all the leaves. Like the, if you've got like Bucephalandra or any kind of plant, try and just, you know, get your fingers in, rub the leaves a wee bit and uh, remove the, um, the diatomaceous algae before you do your water change. It's gonna make a massive, massive, massive difference. One of my absolutely favorite um, things to post on Instagram um, along the reels, kind of kind of like a video um, content, um, I like to post uh, me trying to clean the sand or trying to clean the carpet in my tanks. Um, so I use something like this. This is a gravel vacuum. So you would use this, um, most fish keepers will have one and they will vacuum their gravel or their sand but this is so helpful for our, our um, you know planted tanks trying to remove all the dead all the dead plant matter from the carpet or the 
um, the waste that collects in the carpet or even you know when you use it for sand as in my tanks right now I don't actually have a carpet but um, I'll, I'll overlay some uh, my old uh, footage that I show you me using this on the carpet um, but even for sand, um, one little tip that some people have issues with is when they're when they're um, like using the gravel vacuum on the sand, they'll have issues with the sand coming up through the vacuum into their bucket. Um, I recommend uh, kind of like pinching the edge of um, this here, and uh, as soon as the sand gets to you know somewhere near the top, a dangerous level of where it's like going to come down the vacuum, just pinch it a little bit, stop the flow, let the sand out, and uh, yeah, keep going. Um, so that's that's a that's one of my best tips actually. This is a a really good tip for keeping keeping your tank extra extra clean. One of my pet peeves um, when I see somebody's tank and they have you know like on the silicon or on the edge of the glass where the two panels meet each other. Um, so maybe you can see here. So like over here, like on the edge, um, you would see like a like a layer of uh, algae or the the silicon is like discolored. That's, that can't happen. Um, that just does it just takes away from the nice glass you have in the tank and that kind of uh, minimalistic look. So use a toothbrush or a brush like this. Um, it's gonna come in so handy. Just uh, li lightly against the edge of the, um, uh, the glass. Don't worry about the silicone as long as you're not putting loads of pressure or if you have like a really hard bristle brush, it's not gonna make, it's not gonna make a big difference to your silicone. Obviously be careful but um, try and remove the algae there. It'll make your tank look better for longer because once you leave the algae on the silicon for a long, long time, you know, it's gonna discolor and then you're never gonna be able to remove it until you maybe take down your tank and then bleach it. So use this on a regular basis on your silicon. One of the most important tips I can give someone, no matter what main things you do, no matter how good or bad you are at it, consistency. Make sure you're doing maintenance on a regular basis. If you do your water change twice a week, once a week, every two weeks, then make sure you're doing those water changes because if you don't, you'll be punished. <laughs> you'll, the algae will punish you. Um, I do my water changes once a week. I do about uh, one third to one, about a half, one third to a half water change, change every single week. And I find this works really well for my tank. But it all depends on what kind of fertilizer regime you have, um, how much water you change and uh, just your whole setup so the tank can change the, the amount of water you change uh, or the amount of water changes you do can change from tank to tank it totally depends on what you like to do um, so but the most important thing is whatever you do keep it consistent so that's just a couple of my top tips for cleaning your aquarium I really do hope they were helpful and I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you did like comment subscribe like always and uh, I'll see you in the next one guys bye bye